Don't you just love days like today, silver and gold investors? I woke up bright and early this morning. After doing a few other things, I decided to check the gold price up $25 per ounce. Woohoo! I checked right before we came on and we were just about even. Same thing with silver. Silver was about $25 per ounce this morning. The most recent check that I did showed silver at $24. What is going on? I want to point out one key thing that we don't talk about as often as we should. When they established the COMEX and the LBMA around the mid-1970s, there are there's documented proof, as far as I understand, that says one of the major reasons why they did that was to uh, purposely inject volatility into the precious metals markets and to inject that volatility so that it would discourage individual investors from using gold and silver as an investment, as a way to protect their wealth. So days like today, when we're up $25, and at this point, about even on gold, down 20 or 30 cents on silver, where it feels like your heart is getting ripped out of you. Look, we're so used to it, it doesn't bother us so much, but maybe for the new people, We'll just tell you to get used to it. There are unexplained moves that will occur in the silver market and gold market. But let's remember one thing, guys. Let's remember one critical thing. Gold, I've never heard it said this way. Let me know if you've heard it said this way. But gold is the godfather of all precious metals. Gold is also the godfather of of all anti-fiat movements, anti-unicorn fart dust, anti-printed money, whatever you want to say. And silver will absolutely follow. We know that. So on days like today, when our hearts get ripped out, and remember, gold is the leader. Gold is the godfather, right? Remember that movie, The Godfather, huh? Right? Gold's the godfather. And guess what? Guess what? Gold has broken out from a long-term cup and handle formation. Now, we got not so great news on silver. We're going to talk about what's gone on on the charts with silver, in particular that wedgie that I'm so fond of, and I know you're fond of as well. But gold has broken out of what is the most predictable, the most powerful chart pattern in the history of the whole universe. And we know gold is the most valuable asset in the history of the whole universe. We still have gold around, what, $21.75 per ounce? I know, again, this morning, gold bumped up to $2,200 per ounce. I'm starting to think, and I don't know how you feel about this, but does it feel like here in the short term, $2,200 per ounce? gold, bit of a through it for good. Get a couple weeks where we're above $2,200 per ounce. That could set us up as a new base. Can you believe we're even saying this? Look, guys, I've been at this for two years. And thank you to all of you who've been with me this whole time. But two years ago, if we were talking about $2,200 gold today, March 26, 2024, we'd be jumping for joy. Had we had we known that just three or four years ago. So look. Aren't that great. There's 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 some interesting good things. I, I have some good news for you about gold. And remember, silver will follow. Gold is near an all time high. There is very little resistance above the price where gold is right now. Now, you may be asking, what do you mean by very little resistance, Ron? And look, I don't try to throw things out there on a real technical matter to confuse you, right? We're kind of the, the everyday, the higher intelligence people that follow the silver and gold sector. But what we mean by resistance, it's real easy to understand. Right. As we're sitting here right now around twenty two hundred dollar gold, what that means is there's nobody out there in the history of the universe, the history of the universe who paid twenty three hundred U.S. dollars for gold or paid twenty four hundred or twenty five hundred U.S. dollars for 
gold. There's nobody holding a bag. There's nobody who bought gold at 2,400 who's saying, boy, as soon as it hits 2,400, I'm going to sell and get my money back. And then I can tell my wife what a great investor I am. No, everybody who's in gold right now is pretty much in the money. They're holding. That reduces the supply of gold that's being sold on the market. And when it does break out above that $2,200 level, right, even less people are going to want to sell. And even more people are going to want to buy because people, I don't know why, especially in the precious metal sector, uh, a lot of people are dumb, okay, including me. I call myself dumb. I'm not very smart, but at times I'm dumb as well. And humans are humans. And you know what all the other humans do when something starts to break out to a new all-time high? They chase it, right? It's called FOMO. They get a an attack of FOMO. And as we get to 23, 24, $2,500 gold, and you know, you know, silver is going to be following, right? Look, I'm most fond of silver. I own physical silver. I don't really own any physical gold. I own a lot of gold mining stocks. So I have a very keen interest in the price of gold. But as the gold price goes to $2,400, you know what? Nobody's going to be selling. Nobody. It could be bombs away in a very, very good way, up, up, and away. Now, what about silver, you might be asking? Well, you may not agree with me, right? You don't have to agree with me on this. But I strongly believe that, realistically speaking, um, for all intensive purposes, forget how my dad would say that, but for all intensive purposes, basement dwellers, I think somewhere between $28 per ounce and I'm going to hold the mic today. $28 per ounce and $32 per ounce is the real, real, for all intensive purposes, all-time high for silver, okay? And what that means for silver, because silver also, you can even do it in this way, has a big long-term, like 50-year cup and handle pattern that starts at 50. But nonetheless, when silver gets, but there's not a lot of people that, that own silver, that bought silver at $35. I don't know anybody. Maybe you did. There are some people, but very few people made significant silver investments at $40, 40 US dollars per ounce. 50, I mean, it only hit 50 for like a day or two over the last 50 years. There aren't a lot of people that say, oh, I bought a bunch of silver at $50 an ounce. And when it hits 50, I'm going to sell. No. So we're essentially, once we get above 28. I hear a lot of people saying $28 per ounce for silver. Once we get above 28, 29, I say between 28, 32, maybe I'm aiming a little too high. It's going to be nobody wanting to sell because everybody's going to be in the money, right? And so it will reduce the amount of silver that's being sold on the market. But wait, there's more. There's even more to be happy about with silver, right? Because you know, silver in particular is the FOMO of all FOMO, the fear of missing out of the fear of missing out. I don't want you to be that way. Buy your silver when it's on sale. Today might be a good day. I'm not telling you what to do, but today would be a day where if I were in the market to buy silver right now, I would be buying silver. It's a down day. You know, one thing for sure, if you buy it today, you got a better deal than if you bought it yesterday. That's a good start, right? Maybe it'll get cheaper tomorrow. Maybe it'll go to $18, $15 per ounce. I don't think so. But well, one thing we know about silver investors, it is the FOMO of all FOMO. People went buy silver when the price is going up. They got it all backwards, right? right? When the price, and guess what? Double kicker bonus, the premiums go up too because of the demand. Because when we get to $28, $30 silver, nobody's going to want to be selling. There's going to be a whole new rush of people coming in because they're going to be on Twitter and Facebook and texting each other and on uh, Wall Street Silver and Silver Dijon Club. People are going to be going frenzy over silver. The online bullion dealers, and look, you know, guys, look, there's no guarantees this is going to happen. I'm just giving you my opinion. Don't make any financial decisions. Do your own work. Make your own decisions, right? But everybody's going to be talking about it instantaneously.
online split. We can happen again. I think that it will happen again. But wait, there's even more when we talk about silver. There's a big, big, big bonus factor. Think about this with silver, which makes it a little different than gold. 50, 60% of the silver that is quote unquote consumed or purchased or converted, however you want to say it, 50% of that every year is eaten up by industry. Okay. You can't say that about gold. Gold is just held, held, held. Silver is being eaten up. It's a no other asset class can say that. And, and I forgot, I got another double, triple bonus for you on this one, right? Silver is the only metal that is so far light years away in nominal terms from its all-time high. What did it hit? $51 or something like that back in 1980. $51 in 1980. That in today's dollars is like, I hear different numbers, $165, $160. I've even heard as high as $187 in today's do dollars. You can't say that about anybody else. Let's go to the chart that our good friend Kelton provided us, the wedgie update. It's time to look at the wedge and we're going to break out of this wedge. I am ultra confident, but look guys, Here's the good news. Here's the bad news. This is a four-year chart of the silver price. As you can see over on the left, it starts in June or so of 2020. The price has been uh, trading within a range that is narrowing. That's called a wedge uh, or a sideways triangle. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But as you can see, as we get to the present day, that 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 range is obviously uh, compressing even further. Look, I made a big announcement last week. I was wrong. I'm wrong all the time. Okay, silver had broken out out of the wedge, and it did, as you can see there on the far right hand side. We're still within striking distance. Uh, we'll have to see. It'll be interesting to see how these next three, four, or five weeks play out. I mean, the world is certainly not becoming a nicer place, right? Uh, and I may be wrong about that, about it having broken out of the wedge, but I know one thing for sure I'm not wrong about. I feel good about sharing with the basement dweller community. And that is, if you're in the market to buy silver, gold, or platinum from an online bullion dealer, do yourself a favor. There it is right there. Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, Pimbex.com. Compare their prices. Compare the reviews you can read about the company. Compare the selection. And I think you'll find what I found. They check all the boxes. Thank you, Pimbex, for sponsoring Ron's Basement. And I want to talk, talk to you, though, you, the viewer. I need to tell you, thank you for being here. I've been forgetting to do that. It's a big deal that you join me here in the basement. We love, do you love to talk about silver and gold? Say, hey, if you do, let's type a yes. I'm going to type it in all caps. Yes. We love to talk about silver and gold. It's a big deal. We're all unique. It's a big, big privilege and honor that you join me in the basement. But we're like a group of like, what, 300 people now together talking about what we love. Thank you very much, okay? It's a big deal to me. Susie says, thank you. Please don't forget, give this a thumbs up. That helps get the word out to more people. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, it's free and you'll get a new piece of silver and gold content every single day and new friends, not just me, all these people. I've had so many people now email me saying, I've made some great friends in Ron's basement. I can just name a few like Tim Zub, Jake from Jake's Custom Parts, um, all kinds of people, Coin Shop Chris. I mean, there's there's a lot of you. If I didn't say your name, don't take it personally because you know, right? I mean, there are some wonderful people that you can make friendships with in this community and I would highly encourage you to do so. Uh, what else do we have to talk about? Major, let's talk about the hedge funds. What do you think it means? What do you think it means, basement dwellers, if the hedge funds are buying silver? Let's just quickly go to our friend Niels from Kitco. There he is right there. I like Niels. He used to make videos. I always liked Niels. He got smart and got out of the video business, and now he writes. Uh, it says, uh, it's silver's turn to shine as hedge funds turn their attention away from gold 
Let's just look at a couple of the big interesting things that he points out in here. Hedge funds are starting to take an interest in silver as it could be the next major momentum play in the precious metals market while gold finds a new balance. I think gold's finding a new home. I'm really, how do you feel about this? I'm really optimistic that that new home will be above $2,000. Historic, speculative, speculative, bullish interest in gold, excuse me, has pushed prices to multiple record highs in the last three weeks. Uh-oh, wait, we're going to wait. <laughs> However, silver has lagged significantly. The gold to silver ratio remains fairly elevated, trading above 88 points. Yes, it takes 88. All right, grab here. Let me just show you this. All right, we love to look at our silver. We'll come back to this. Oh, hold on. Guys, look at that. Uh, a beautiful American silver eagle. Look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful that is. Would you, thank you, Ron Adams, for the super chat. Super appreciated. Would you trade 88 of these things? I took one to work. I have one that Jake got me from Jake Custom Parts that I, I took to work. I was looking at it. Get yourself, if you don't, get one of these and hold it, hold it by the edges so you don't get fingerprints all over it. Would you trade 88 of these for one ounce of gold? Maybe you would. I don't know. To me, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. There's a chart of the gold to silver ratio. Um, and somebody pointed out to me, I've been saying, why is it the gold to silver ratio? It should be the silver to gold ratio. Um, and I was kind of wrong about that. Someone explained it to me that it made sense. It's called the gold to silver ratio because you divide the gold price by silver. Gold is the numerator, which is on top. And silver is the denominator, which is on bottom. And my daughter is texting me from school. Sorry, I got uh, uh, a little. Uh, hey, Susie, if you're on, uh, send Lily a message and tell her I love her. And I'm on a live stream, unless it's an emergency, please. Susie, are you there? Over. So uh, the latest date, okay, the CFTC, we're going to skip all that. The silver market has seen its net bullish positioning increase for three consecutive weeks. That's positive. Um, ba, ba, ba. Although silver market has seen a significant increase in bullish speculative positioning, the market is still well below the level seen in early 2020, uh, ahead of the rally towards $30 an ounce. Okay, that's about top flows. Uh, silver has been slow to wake up from its hibernation. It's like a sleeping bear. Many analysts note that it's has plenty of time to catch up with gold. Uh, John Lafarge, head of real assets at Wells Fargo, said that traditional traditionally silver is late to the party, but once it finds its momentum, it can easily outperform gold. Quote, investors need to see gold move first and, and then they will get into silver. It may be slow to rally, but pretty soon silver will be the asset to own. Hmm, interesting. Uh, some analysts have noted that silver has struggled as investor sentiment regarding the health of the global economy. Uh, although silver is a precious metal, roughly 50%, we already covered that, Niels, is used for in industry, which I think is actually a good thing. Do you think that silver, let me ask you that question, right? Do you think silver is still a monetary metal? I do. Right. I mean, they still make American silver eagles. They still make UK Britannias. They still make South African Krugerrands. They still make Austrian Philharmonics. They still make Armenian Noah's Arks. They still make all these sovereign coins that have a dollar or a currency value, a unicorn fart dust value associated with them. So I think it is absolutely still a monetary metal. Let's see what the com commodity analyst at TD Ameritrade or TD Security said. He said the gold market has now fully priced in the Federal Reserve's monetary policy easing, which I don't think they're going to do. I know you think I'm crazy, but I don't think the Fed is ever going to lower rates. And they're not going to raise rates either, because if they lower rates, inflation's really going to take off. And if they raise rates, that will destroy the banking sector. And from a fiscal perspective, the United States would find itself in an untenable, unsustainable situation. So what's going to happen is rates are going to stay right where they are. And inflation is going to creep up, creep up, creep up. And when your Uncle Billy and Aunt Jan 
uh, and your neighbor, uh, uh, Billy Bob, all realize that uh, that their value of their paper money is going down because inflation's going up. They're all going to try to buy silver and gold, but it's not going to be available because we have fast technology now and people are going to wipe out the online bullion dealers and we're all going to live happily ever after. Again, I don't have a crystal ball, but that's the way I see this playing out. Uh, the asymmetrics and macro trader. Well, I don't want to read that. Who cares? Okay. Uh, that's about it. That was a pretty good. Niels, thank you. Thank you. Hey, guys, we're back. 302 people. All right. When we get to 100, thumbs up. I'll ring the crazy bell. Uh, I don't think Susie's on her walkie-talkie. Susie, are you there? Over. Hmm. Maybe Susie's not here. Maybe Susie left me. Hey, maybe I can start doing the live streams from upstairs finally. You know, I owned this house before Susie and I got married. Then she acquired half of it legally when we got married. And suddenly I was a band to the basement. So, you know, I get to control any room with a concrete floor. But if she took off on me, I might just head back upstairs. I hope that's not the case. She's a wonderful wife and I love her. Dearly, we got a lot going on with bricks. We're going to cover that in one second. Uh, oh, and what about nobody talks? Have you noticed this? Facebook, nobody's there's big stuff going on with bricks. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold on one second. There's big stuff going on with bricks. Yes, you need to know about it. There's big stuff going on with remember that. That acronym that we all hated to hear, CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currencies. Well, I gotta, I'm gonna go into really deep tomorrow, but I'm gonna give you a big taste of what's going on, and it's downright scary right now. Okay. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Oh, what about Basil Three? What about silver? Somebody, please, please, I'm gonna ask you for help, basement dwellers. Okay, because Bruce, one of our fellow basement dwellers. Uh, sent me an email or made a comment, and Susie emailed it to me. Basel three were the big banking regulation changes, like international banking changes. And remember, like four years ago, hey, and I'm just as guilty as anybody else out there. But all the gold people were saying, with Basel three changes the makes gold into a tier one asset, which means it can be valued at 100% of its value, the price of gold is going to explode. And I don't know all the intricate details, but there was a lot of hoopla about how Basel three could make gold go to 20,000 or 10,000. Well, it wound up being kind of a nothing burger as far as I can tell so far, but I had no idea. Did you know that apparently Basel three also made physical silver into a tier one asset. I Googled it. Here, let's run out there right now. I'll prove it to you. But I don't know much more about it. But that was very, very fascinating to me um, that we've got. Hold on here. This is Google. Oh, I don't want to search Google. I want to uh, hold on here. What the heck? Oh, boy, I'm losing it. Hold on here. Basel three. Basil, there we go. See, it knows what I'm after. Here, according to Basel Three Accords, physical silver is considered a tier one asset, a zero risk asset, and classified as such due to its credit risk. The Basel Three is an international regulatory accord that aims to improve the supervision, risk management, and regulation of the banking sector. Blah, 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 blah. So, if anybody knows more about that and can research it and send me some info, I'd love to share it with the group because. That's a big deal, right? I never, nobody, I never really heard anybody talking about it. So Bruce, way to go, Brucey. Bruce, you are the basement dweller of the day for bringing that up to us. Uh, we need to do more research into that. Guys, there's so much going on in the paper market for silver and gold for that matter, right? There's that cartoon of like a wall in China on one side and the USA on the other. And China is throwing piles of paper dollars over the wall to the United States. And the United States is throwing piles of physical silver and physical gold back to China. And I have a question. I was talking with John Little uh, from the Silver Academy. Yeah, the guy that like puts out something every single day about silver, tireless. 
He's a journalist. There's a link to his information in the description of this video. But I was chatting with him this morning and I said, John, we were talking about China, India, right? 70 million ounces imported in February. Um, the What is it called? The SIP, whatever, this ETF in London that, that acquired 30 million ounces uh, in the last couple of weeks. And I said, but what about China? Like, we don't really know. We know now that they're going. Going a rocking silver directly in from places like Mexico. I said, but think about this. And let me ask you this question. How long have you been in the silver stacking? For those of you who are new, I'm going to share this with you. I think it's very interesting. It, you know, like 10 years ago, I bought a couple for my daughters. They're 12 now. They were probably one. So 11 years ago, there was always all this hoopla about Chinese silver panda coins. I think they're like 30 grams. They're not like they measure grams, not ounces, but they're 30 gram, almost an ounce, whatever. They're you know, troy ounce, regular ounce, blah, blah. Okay. But you don't hear much about them. Like you never ever hear anybody like promoting uh, or talking. I'm like, are they, is that because they're keeping all the silver for themselves in China? I think that could likely be the case. I don't know. Again, if you want to research it some, I was like, but, and I did go like on JM Bullion, some of the, you know, I, I searched and they do have some of these coins available, but they're very expensive. So I'm thinking like, is China hoarding all their silver? Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? With what we know about China. We know that the Chinese refiners, I had footage from Chinese state TV where they were interviewing Chinese silver refiners that were like, we need silver. We need silver. And it makes, and they were making fun. They were making fun of us. They were making fun of the United States and the price. They're like, the price of silver needs to be much higher so that we can get more supply onto the market, right? They were making fun. They're like, the United States and London, they base the silver price on interest rates and federal, like that doesn't, you know, it don't, it matters for now, but here's the deal. And people are pointing this out. People are seeing this happening right now, that the physical demand, the physical market, the actual metal, the physical will overwhelm the paper, make believe highly leveraged derivatives, options, futures, that exist right now in the silver market. And when that that happens, There's nobody talking about the BRICS, There's a BRICS gold back currency and gold's going to go to $5 million an ounce, blah, blah, blah. Well, that never happened. But BRICS are having a major impact on the world economy and will have a major impact on the price of the precious metals. Before we run over there, I want to say quick thank you. Channel sponsor, First Mining Gold. They're a Canadian gold development company. Two multi-million ounce projects in Canada. You can learn more about them at firstmininggold.com. And if you want even more information, I want to talk to a real live human and a great guy. You can reach out to Paul Morris. He's their director of investor relations. I'll put a link to his email in the description of this video. And of course, our friends at Fortuna Silver. I mentioned this yesterday. We are wrapping up the first quarter of 2024. And if it proves to be anything like what the fourth quarter was for Fortuna, I just can't wait to see their results. Jorge Ganoza has consistently and wisely built the company over almost 20 years. Now they have five operating mines two regions, Latin America and West Africa. And look, I didn't know anything about gold mining in West Africa a couple of years ago. And what I've learned in the last couple of years makes me very excited about the prospects for any company that's looking for gold in West Africa. Let's go to the BRICS. Speaking of Africa, I've got some news for you out of Africa and the BRICS. Here we go. Another country. Expresses interest to join the BRICS. I challenge you. Is there anybody out there who thinks they can name the current countries faster than Ron from Ron's basement? We got Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates. I can even say the last one slow, but there's 30 other countries that want to join, but one more now 
that is making a lot of noise about wanting to join a handful of developing countries in Asia, Africa, Eastern Europe are looking to join the BRICS in 2024. South African Foreign Minister Nadeli Pandor confirmed recently that around 36 countries, I was wrong, it grows every day. It's like the number of states in the United States that are putting forward legal tender legislation. 36 countries have now formally applied to join the BRICS. 36, guys. Amid the joining frenzy, another country has thrown its hat into the ring in the hopes of joining the alliance. The development indicates that the bloc is becoming powerful in its agenda to, pay attention to this word right here, de-dollarize the world and promote local currency. So who is it? Who is it? Who knows? Type it in the uh, type it in the com- or the comment, the whatever that chat. The latest in new country to express its interest in joining BRICS, the moment you've been waiting for, is the African nation of Cameroon. Russian ambassador ambassador Georgi Todua confirmed that Cameroon has expressed it its interest in being part of the bloc in 2024. Cameroon is on the Gulf of Guinea and is a Central African country with varied terrain and wildlife. Okay, why is that a big deal, right? Why is that a big deal? I'll tell you why. It's a big, big deal. It's a big deal because Africa, contrary to what a lot of Americans think, I don't know what's going on here. Can you guys see that? All reactions. I don't know what's going on. (laughs) Do you guys see? Susie, can you hear me? Can you guys see me and hear me? I think I lost you. Hold on here. Uh, Susie? Okay, here we go. I'm back. I think you can hear me now. Okay. All right. Sorry, guys. Why is it a big deal? I'll tell you why. Because I think 93% of your fellow Americans don't even realize that Africa is a continent. They think it's a country. Ask some people, say, is Africa a country or a continent? They'll say, most people will say it's a uh, a country, okay? It's massive, guys. It's massive. It's resource rich, and it's developing. John Little, this was months ago when we were talking about Ethiopia. He's like, Ethiopia is the biggest sleeper out there. There's like big things. So this is a big, big deal, and they are de-dollarizing. It will be it will have a major impact on the metals prices. These countries are moving away from the dollar. They got more than half of the world's resources. They got more than half of the world's population. They definitely, right? We're talking India, (coughs) all those countries, their economies are growing. Their middle classes are expanding. Not like here in the United States. Do you really want to tell me that the middle class is expanding in the United States? Uh Uh-uh, right? Ask a millennial, ask a Generation X, ask a, a, what are Gen Z, whatever they are. The middle class is dying in the United States. Kids can't afford to buy houses. My nieces and nephews that are 24, 26, 28 years old, like when I was that age, I was a hard worker, right? I had a degree in accounting. I worked, I was a pencil pusher. Right? I could afford to buy a nice little condo and then a nice house, right? I saved my money. These kids, they don't have a chance. If I was coming out today, what's an accountant make out of college? 45K? What are you going to buy with that? Right? It's very difficult for these kids. But in India, in China, in all All these, and it's now China, I I take that back. I know China's having, but nonetheless, overall, and especially over the last 20 years, there's great wealth being created. And guys, hold on a second. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Let's just quickly, quickly review. It's been two weeks, and this is going to knock your socks off. Those of you who are new, those of you who are old, it'll give you a warm, fuzzy, basement feeling, because that's what we like. There are 1.4 billion people in China. There are 1.4 billion people in in India. They both have rapidly expanding economies. That's 2.8 billion people. That's like nine or seven times, eight times the United States population. Their economies are growing 
quickly. But the icing on top is both those countries are crazy about silver and gold. They have deep cultural current um, knowledge of the value of silver and gold. It's integrated, 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 integrated. It's woven into the fabric of their lives. The grandparents in India tell the grandchildren, you should own your body weight in silver and you should buy just as much gold as you ever possibly can. It's way different. Is that why India imported 70 million ounces of silver in February? Everybody's putting out all these, you know, no, maybe solar and maybe young people, jewelry. Okay. It's a big, big deal. And it's happening right now, right before our very eyes. The world is changing. You want a big word, right? Everybody who's been in the basement for a while knows this word and we'll review it. And for you new people, bifurcating, that means splitting, right? And this other side, okay, here's us, here's them. They're growing, okay? They're expanding. They're cooperating. Let's just be real. They are cooperating with each other. They seem to be getting along very well. Remember last summer when Joe Biden, our fearless leader, went to Saudi Arabia to beg them to pump more oil before the midterm elections? And MBS, the president of Saudi Arabia, they snubbed Joe Biden, wouldn't even shake his hand, did like a fist bump or something, right? And then, like three weeks later, Vladimir Putin shows up. A few weeks after that, President Xi from China, and they're at the airport meeting them. They have fighter jets flying over with smoke coming out with the color of the flags. They have like the streets lined with people and with the flags of Russia and China. I mean, it's a different world right now. They're growing. They're getting along. Okay, let's be real. I mean, I, I don't want to be negative. I love this country. I happen to think our founding fathers are rolling over in their graves. And it's okay for me to say that, right? right? Our founding fathers did not envision a country that was going to try to rule the world and get in unbelievable. I hear these numbers, the number of wars, we whatever, okay? They're getting along, they're expanding, and they love silver and gold. I don't know, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'll talk tomorrow, but there's more, there's big developments right now in the central bank digital currency world. A news story out of Reuters, okay? You know, the SWIFT system? The SWIFT is, it's an acronym. Let's go look at, now, now I'm curious. Let's learn something together, basement dwellers, and see what SWIFT stands for. Oh, not SWIFT. SWIFT bank system. There we go. Hopefully, this will tell us what it stands for. Uh, of course, it doesn't tell us. What, what is the SWIFT banking system? It's uh, they are They are incorporating CBDC. Okay, here. The Society for Worldwide... Interbank Financial Telecommunications. It's an antiquated system that's used by the West to move money around, okay? There's a big article out of Reuters. I'm going to cover it more tomorrow uh, that basically says now they have, and this is the scary part, they've, they've put forth an agenda that they want to have uh, CBDCs fully integrated into the SWIFT system within the next 18 to 24 months. So it's coming, guys. I mean, judging on that, it's coming. And like 95% of the Western world governments are working on CBDCs. We're going to dive into that tomorrow and what that could mean for the silver and gold market. Oh, my gosh. We got to do something very important, guys. Please, I need you to type 88888 to say, oh, uh-oh, thank you. Okay, thank you to the moderators. Okay, uh, they're not rolling. They're spinning in their graves. Yes, thank you, Stephanie. That's a great comment, right? They are. I mean, uh, here, there's our friend Stephanie. They're not rolling. They are spinning in their graves. Our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, do you know what he said? He said something that everybody needs to remember that lives in the United States right now. And we were taught, we were taught what an unbelievably great man Jefferson was. Guys like Andrew Jackson. But what did Thomas Jefferson say? Thomas Jefferson said the biggest threat to the United States of America is not 
an invading army. It's an invasion by central banks and large corporations. Are we seeing that today? Yeah, look, some people say, right? The medical industrial complex, the defense industrial complex, the central banks, right? The Federal Reserve, right? What has it done for you? Here, oh, this is great. What has the Federal Reserve done for you? Let me tell you something. I'm going to show you a visual. Man, I almost forgot. This is a great one, okay? I, I'm going to ask you, it, what has the Federal Reserve done for you? And then I want you to look at this. Uh, here, here we go. Here it is, okay? This is from our friends at the Federal Reserve, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve, the United States of America. Okay, this blue line down here says uh, that's the total net worth held by the bottom 50% of Americans. That, okay, the bottom 50% total net worth. Okay, that does not look real good, right? You know what this red line is? Total net worth held by the top 0.1%. 0.1%. And if I have that correct, that's not one in a hundred, guys. That's one in a thousand. One in a thousand people. And look how it's gone up, 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 up. All right. We're going to talk about that. But what's interesting, this is what the Federal Reserve has done. That's the M2 money supply, which is like all the money in the economy, bank accounts, CDs, money market accounts, all that, all the printed unicorn fart dust. You see how the M2 money supply that our Federal Reserve, all that unicorn fart dust they printed, remember 2020, the health crisis that hit and they printed all that money. Look at the net worth of the top of the one in a thousand, the top 0.1%. It went right up with it. Look at the bottom 50%. What does that tell us? Huh? Yeah. Right? So are our founding fathers spinning in their graves, as Stephanie said? Okay. Uh, yes, I think they are. Thank you, Stephanie. How do I get rid of that? Hi. Let's see who else gets featured today in Ron's basement. Annie Oakley. Please smack the like button. Thank you, Annie. <coughs> Brick control countries are emerging. Mar the SWIFT system is killing the market. Yeah, and they're developing... Uh, their own system. Jake from Jake's Custom Parts, right? Bricks calling the shots. Here, Patrick Pearl throws out the Bricks system will be set up in a way they could be at war with other partners and the financial system isn't affected. It's a tool and a tool only from the reports I've seen between nations. Yeah, we're, we've lived in a, in a really... Uh, uh, a really a hegemony, hegemony, whatever you want to call it, world where the United States, especially over the last 50 years, essentially ruled the world. Is that actually changing right now? Okay. And this is what's cool. This is, this will blow you away. I heard, I didn't bring, I didn't, I didn't invent this and I forget it was a lady I heard say this, but guys, this is music to your ears as a silver and gold investor. Okay, the BRICS nations, I won't name all 10 of them again, and the other 37 countries that want to join them now, they are gaining in power, right? They're cooperating with each other. They're coming up with new systems. They have a, the, most of the world's resources, the world's economy growth, all that great stuff, right? So uh, over the last 50 years, the old United States are, oh, wait, 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 wait. What about the dollar, the dollar, the king dollar? And they're all throwing their dollars back to the United States. But they don't necessarily want to really trust each other. What this person put forward, and I believe will be the case, is that no longer will the United States enjoy, right? And we abused it. Let's be real, right? We borrowed and borrowed and borrowed. We forced people to use by, you know, the petrodollar, all that. But but what's happening now is the world is de-dollarizing. They're not necessarily moving to any other specific current. And see, banks of the world are buying gold. Think about it. Right? Doesn't it make sense? Andy Sheckman says, and I'm going to have Andy on here in a few weeks. Our old friend, Andy Sheckman, I'm excited about that. Keith Newmeyer, 
in a couple weeks will be in the basement with me. Uh, Jordan Roy, Bur Jordan Boy Byrne, uh, 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 David Morgan. I've had a lot of great help. Big Tim Silvershire helped coordinate. Uh, Jake from Jake's Custom Parts, I want to say that as well. Uh, but David Morgan, right? He, he's like a legend in the silver world. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Doesn't it make sense? Right? It, yeah, I'll tell you the beautiful thing about silver and gold. But I don't have any gold to show you. Besides it being just darn beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Boy, the camera focused on it. Oh, look at the light. Woo, you want to reach out and touch it, don't you? Right? Right? It's been around for thousands of years. If you were dropped out of you and I, let's go on a little trip. Okay? We're going to go on two trips. Then we're going to say bye-bye for the day. Sorry. But we're going to go on two trips first. Number one, we're going to go on a little airplane trip. So we get all our luggage. We get in the airplane. It's an old airplane. We get in the airplane. We take off. Woo! We're flying. We don't. It's a mystery trip. We don't know where we're going. But about three hours into it, the pilot says, abandon ship, abandon ship. So we put on our, our parachutes. We have no idea where we are. We look down. We're like, well, thank God there's some land. And we jump out of the plane. We parachute. We land. No matter where me and you land in the world, guess what? This, my friends, this, I got to show you one more time. I just love these things. This has value. So does that gold you may have in your pocket, okay? The other trip we'll go on, we'll go on a cruise. We're done with airplanes. That trip didn't work out too well. We had to jump out of the plane. I don't want to, I'm 54, right? I'm having some medical issues. I don't want to deal with that. So we're going to take a cruise. So we get on a boat together. We get in our cabin. We're having a great time. Of course, we're primarily talking about silver and gold, okay? But then we start to feel some weird things and we start to notice that the crew's acting a little funny, right? And that boat is like the U.S. economy. That boat is captained by Jerome Powell in the United States Federal Reserve. Or maybe Joe, Joe Biden is the captain of the ship. Sorry, I'm not laughing. I didn't mean that was an accidental laugh. Joe Biden's the captain of the ship. Uh, Jerome Powell's his first mate. He's Gilligan, whatever, okay? But we start to notice a lot of the crews acting funny. These these twelve heads of of ones the head of the of the mechanic department, right? They're the they're like the Fed governors, and we're like, you know what? This something's not right on this boat. Maybe we should. And we start to feel and we smell a little smoke, and we're like, they keep telling us everything's great, everything's great. But we're the first ones. We're the silver and gold investors. We're the first ones to get in the first lifeboat and get off that ship because we can sense. We can look at all the pieces and put it together and realize something's not right. So we get in that first lifeboat with some other smart people. Can't get too many people in there because we all got a bunch of silver in our pockets. But we float away from the boat. And as we get further away from the boat, we're able to see it from a different perspective. And we can see that thing really starting to lean, right? But we also see all these people. On the, on the balconies, partying around. There's the S&P 500 balcony. There's the, the commercial real estate balcony. There's the bond market balcony. There's our deck, I'm sorry. There's, there's uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, and Joe, Captain Joe keeps getting on saying, don't worry, folks, this ship is unsinkable. This, this ship was built to not sink like the Titanic, right? Yeah. Right. And Jerome Powell's up throwing a big party on the top level and they're all partying. They're drinking. Right. They're loving it. Everything's great. Right. They can't even notice that the boat's starting to ship. But we do. And we're away. And pretty soon they all realize they're in big trouble. Hey, thank you for joining me. Thanks. Oh, which bell do I have to ring? Oh, can we get to 200 likes? I really would like to ring the cowbell. How many likes do we have? Hold on here. Oh, here. Oh, hold on, guys. This is interesting. Ron's basement. Okay. Anyway, let's ring the bell for you. Okay, basement dwellers. Ten rings of the bell for the hundred thumbs up. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being part of the basement. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Be good to yourself. Thank you. Thank you.